Uh, as I said, as I said a couple weeks ago, uh, when I was uh, table topping, I know you're talking about posture. So we're going to be nitpicking Sean's posture. Look at him standing in my chair. Good. Round of applause for Sean standing in my chair. All right. But specifically, I want to talk about how muscular dysfunction affects your posture and what kind of changes it causes in your body. Uh, for example, uh, Sean, I'm going to uh, paint one of your muscles. It's going to cause a change in your body. I want you to let that happen okay. so you can show, all right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work on Sean's rectus femoris. We're going to give that a big pinch. You can pinch harder. Yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't need to be that much harder. But you'll notice how his pelvis shifted this way. And the front of his pelvis, you didn't see it from the, this side, but it also went forward and tipped down. That caused this shoulder to dip, and in order to rebalance, he went back this way, so his shoulder stayed level. And it tickled. <laughs> it tickled. <laughs> All right. Now, Sean, did that cause any discomfort anywhere else besides, uh, besides your hips? Not that I noticed. Not that you noticed. <laughs> Uh, I mean, over, well, you were pitching me. Over time, over time, that causes uh, uh, additional uh, dysfunction up and down the spine. Let's turn Sean around real quick. Turn around here, Sean. All right. Look at that. All right. Round the shoulders forward. Look at that. Shoulders forward and get, uh, rotate to the right slowly. Come on, try and move your feet, Sean. Oh. Turn slowly, move the feet. All right, now the shoulders are forward. If you'll notice, his head also went forward when he uh, rounded his shoulders. Pull your shoulders back, head comes back. That's uh, one of the causes of uh, Tex neck, which is the uh, new, uh, the, the, the new pain. Uh, Diagnosis. Diagnosis, and uh, it is the uh, it is the epidemic of the upcoming generation. Uh, you'll notice all the kids these days have their shoulders rounded forward, their heads forward, and they're growing up that way. That's a major problem. Uh, that's going to cause bone deformations in the neck, and they're going to have old people necks by the time they're twenty. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's say 90, 100 ish. Wow. So you're, you're all right. You're okay. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's look at another example of uh, bad posture. All right, Sean, I want you to uh, kind of rotate your hips forward and stick your butt out. <laughs> forward and stick my butt out? Yeah. At the same time? Yeah. 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 Something like that. Straight up. Like that. <laughs> but it's funny, but but people do this and look at what happened to Sean's back. It pinches, it hurts. It hurts. Where's it hurt, Sean? It hurts down here low. Oh man. It's not comfortable. It hurts really bad after a long time. Yep. And you you'll see uh, especially uh, ladies do this because they want to stick their butt out so that it looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, an, it's an illusion. It's an illusion. It's it's really bad for your spine. Go ahead, straight up. We don't want we we don't want Sean to hurt, right, guys? Yeah. Right. Right. Round of applause if you don't want Sean to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So these are a few examples of uh, common postural issues that we we see nowadays that uh, I see a lot in my office. I'm sure Jeff sees a whole lot in his office as a chiropractor. Uh, it's very important to uh, correct muscular dysfunction to allow for uh, normal uh, postural health, normal skeletal structure and alignment so that you can uh, have a healthy life and, and move freely. Uh, a good example of uh, something, uh, Sean, why don't we uh, take a seat on this chair right here. Okay. Look how nice the shots. Very appropriate. Very appropriate. I'm working at that. He's working at normal. <laughs> Actually, this is, I, I've been in Sean's office. This is pretty normal for him. Yeah. yeah. And then I'd get up and do like exercise. 
Uh, there's still something wrong with this posture, though. Uh, Jeff, you mind uh, telling us what it is? Uh, no clue. <laughs> <laughs> his chin's too high. Like this. No, no, no. His chin's great. Okay. His shoulders should be back a little more, but that's not a big deal. What's really wrong with his posture is the way he's sitting on his uh, on, on his pelvis. His pelvis is now rotated backwards, causing intense pressure on his lower spine. You get tired after sitting like that for how long? Um, I, I, I alternate with standing. Yeah, I know you alternate, but how, how, how quickly do you alternate? Uh, probably 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. 20 minutes or half an hour. This is. Uh, this is the sitting is the uh, ep uh, health epidemic of our generation. Uh, sitting is uh, considered pretty uh, terrible. Uh, go ahead and straighten your legs out, Tony Sean. Like this? Yep. Let them let rest. Let them rest on the floor. Oh. All right. A lot of people sit like this. <clears throat> now notice how instantly Sean's entire back relaxed, and now he's laying against the uh, uh, seat rest. Right. Uh, this is more now, comfortable. It feels more comfortable, right? Yeah. It's actually not. Well, it's not okay. you, you are fooling yourself. Because now, I'm going to press here, and Sean's going to be feeling it right in his hamstrings right there. Because now that chair is cutting into the hamstrings. Yeah. So the best way to sit, all right, bring your left feet, feet flat. There you go. All right, sit up straight. Now, uh, try and uh, rotate your butt back and bring your spine into a line. There we go. You want to round, round out that lower back. Bring a good lo uh, lumbar curve back in here. So, right here, Sean. More? Right there. Oh, okay. Like that? You feel that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How easy does that feel? Um, it feels like I have a large man's hand in my back. <laughs> you, do, you do have a large man's hand in your back. Round of applause for John. The point behind this was I was using my hand to provide support for Sean's lumbar spine. Uh, just like you, if you would have had a lumbar pillow, for example, in your chair. Right. That would allow Sean to sit much more comfortably for a longer period of time if he had to, uh, for example, work at his desk for a long time, which he does. Mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, he has that standing desk so he can just stand up and start to sit there. Yeah. Uh, it's very important, uh, go ahead and stand up, Sean. It's very important that uh, if you work in an office, you don't just sit there and uh, have bad posture all day. Uh, talk to your office manager about uh, an ergonomic chair, something with good lumbar support, something that doesn't cut into your hamstrings uh, and cause your hamstrings to shorten up and all of a sudden your low back hurts because you have tight hamstrings. Uh, other things that cause uh, uh, low back problems and uh, your low back problems all, the tension it all comes from the knees to the hips, knees to the hips. And, uh, very rarely experienced uh, where someone has actual low back pain and it was coming from the muscles in the low back. Uh, that's because there's uh, only a couple muscles in the low back and uh, they usually cause pain in other places. For example, there's a quadratus lumborum right here on the side. I treated Sean for the quadratus lumborum at one point. Yep. Uh, that affected his ability to move side to side like this and it felt pretty much like he got punched in the side maybe stabbed in the kidney kidney <laughs> it, it was uh, pretty interesting wasn't it <laughs> it was it was uh, very tight yes it was but when you feel when you feel in that low back pain it's coming from vastus lateralis right here so i'm going to go ahead and pinch that and how's that feel sean Actually, it feels kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> Causing tension in your low back, though. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of try to stretch those out, like with this, but that's mostly the front, isn't it? Yeah. So it just doesn't really do the side so much. So now, now Sean's talking. Uh, now Sean's going into the uh, other aspect of my practice, which is corrective action. So we're talking about stretching, all right? Uh, when you stretch the quads, you want to stretch them three ways. You want to stretch across. And that will stretch 
vastus medius and intermedius. You want to stretch straight to the back, just like that. And then you want to take and angle your foot out to the side. And that will stretch out the fastest lateralis on the side. You feel it all the way around? Yeah, I can feel it across my hip, which is, you know, an area that I came to you for. Yes, you did. Yep. All right. Uh, which side? Foot out to the side. Well, first, first straight back, straight back. then out to the yep. side. Out to the side. I can feel it across my hip. It feels good, actually. It feels really good. <laughs> yeah. We'll be in your office tomorrow after you try this. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, Will. <laughs> All right. So uh, those are some examples of how uh, muscular dysfunction and tension in your muscles causes postural problems. Uh, another example of uh, how muscular dysfunction causes postural problems, uh, I don't know if we're going to see this in Sean, so uh, maybe we'll call Pat up here, He'll, because I, I know Pat. Should I go sit down? Oh no, you, you can stand up. Okay, come, come up here, Pat. Yes. Well, all right. Come up here, Welcome, Pat. Welcome, Welcome to the team. <laughs> Welcome to the team, Pat. All right, a round of applause for Pat. <laughs> We're going to turn Pat to the side, and I want I, I want Pat to present what uh, to you what he thinks is a pretty normal squat. So just do a regular air squat, Pat. All right, let's 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 boo. Boo. <laughs> I, I like Jeff's response. All right, let's go down nice and slow, Pat. You you can handle this. All right, stick that butt out. There you go. Now, oh, there it was. Did you see it, Jeff? I did. Oh. Come all the way down. Okay. What? A little bit more. Lower. There it is, right there. Yeah. Uh, what happened is because of Pat's uh, restriction in his hamstrings, his hips tucked under him when he was doing his squats. That causes a complete change of balance in his uh, entire in the entire exercise. That is a postural uh, problem that uh, will affect him and muscular dysfunction that will affect him in all kinds of ways, especially in his uh, work uh, as a floor cleaner. He's always pushing, so if we don't get those hamstrings loosened up, he's gonna have trouble bending over to touch the ground and trouble uh, squatting and picking things up. Uh, so that's an exa another example of how uh, tight muscles can really affect your posture. Thank you very much, Pat. Round of applause for Pat. Giving us a good show of that squat that I was just looking for because I knew he would have it because of, because of his work. So when you do a squat, let me do a demonstrate. You want to balance. Uh, you want to be balanced over your heels. Toes are nice and light. And ideally, if you have the flexibility, your hips won't tuck underneath. You'll come straight back. And out. Very, very neat. Good balance right there, right? Does it look good? <laughs> you, you be the judge. I don't do that anymore. All right, uh, so we briefly touched on the uh, other part of what I do, which is corrective actions. There's a third portion uh, of uh, what I do in my office called uh, perpetuating factors, uh, or dealing with perpetuating factors and assessing those. And when we talk about perpetuating factors, those are the things that cause you pain consistently. Like Sean sitting down. How do we fix, alter, or eliminate the pain in Sean's low back from sitting down? Well, Sean's done quite well on his own by standing up, walking around, getting his hips and legs moving again. Uh, you know, uh, there's dozens of things you do every day that uh, cause you pain that you don't realize. And they're habits that everyone has that you think are normal. Uh, from your driving position, the way you hold your thumb, the way you sit in your chairs, uh, the way you sleep, the way you rest on your couch at home. Uh, all these things that seem perfectly innocuous and perfectly lazy. And you'll all of a sudden realize 
This is what has been, what has been causing you pain all your life. Uh, the worst example of a perpetuating factor I ever saw this young gentleman, go ahead and take him on the seat for me, Sean. Okay. Round of applause for Sean. <laughs> I feel so loved. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Scoot your, uh, scoot your bottom forward on the chair a little bit, Sean. More. Even more. Oh, yeah. This, this, this was this gentleman's driving position. Low right. Seat uh, about halfway back, not as far back as it should have been. It was raised all the way up, just like the chair right here, and he was tilted back as far as he could be. And this gentleman was mine and Sean's height in a Honda Accord, and he drove Uber and he drove around for doing sales for his company. Uh, he would come in once a week for a massage and uh, twice a week for an adjustment. Uh, this is when I worked with uh, my friend Danny over at uh, Garcia Chiropractic. And uh, I took a look at him one day and I said, there's something wrong here. You're a young kid. He was only 26. Uh, why do you keep coming in with the same problem every week? What do you do? He's like, I drive for a living and then I drive over. I'm like, well, really? What's your driving position like? I came in, uh, I walked down to his car and took a look. It was absolutely the worst driving position ever. So what I did was I sat him up. Go ahead and sit up for me, Sean. Moved him a little bit, actually moved him a little bit closer, lowered the seat all the way to the bottom so his head had room. Never came back in. <laughs> oh my god. He never came back because he was no longer in pain because he was not hurting himself anymore. So. Anyway, uh, how much time have I got left? You're good. Uh, well, the, the, the last and primary aspect of what I do is uh, taking an accurate history and assessment of what's going on with the body and uh, what you do for a living to figure out what's going on and accurately target how to fix it. Uh, but that's the most boring part. I'm sure you don't hear about that. <laughs> All right, well, let's take any questions. Anybody have any questions for me? Go ahead, Pat. Talked about sleeping. What's the best way to sleep or position? Ideally, the best sleeping position is on your back. On your back, straight up. Straight up. Yes. What do you recommend for long plane trips? Long plane trips? Don't take them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, those seats are not designed for human beings. They're designed for midgets <laughs> who are extra skinny. <laughs> Uh, there's no way they can be comfortable for any reasonably sized human being. So I suggest you take a neck pillow uh, and a lumbar pillow and just suffer as best you can. <laughs> so it is. Before you can get up and walk to the back, which is what I do as often as I can. Go right into the cockpit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Go ahead, Kathy. We, we got a question from Kathy here. Why do you get so sore after massage or exercise? Why, the question is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, why do you get so sore after massage or exercise? So why do you get so sore after massage or exercise? Well, exercise, it uses up the fuel in your muscles and leaves a byproduct called lactic acid. The build up of lactic acid uh, it builds up enough to crystallize and that causes a sharp uh, aching pain in your muscles. It really hurts. Uh, the same thing can happen uh, during massage. Uh, when you're manually manipulating muscles, you're still stretching them out, working them out, uh, flushing out old fluids, old, uh, old, old junk, and uh, allowing fresh blood flow in to uh, re-energize the muscles. Uh, so that's why you can be sore after massage and especially after exercise. Uh, and are you getting enough water? Yes. 
the cure is always water. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.